Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling video tutorial. This video obviously relates to the course a 60 minute recipe for creating a simple project finance model. If you haven't already done so I suggest that you stop the video and read through the ebook. If you have read through the ebook then you should understand that creating a simple project finance model involves five key ingredients. The first one is obviously the assumptions that go into the model. If you have good assumptions that are put into the model then you're going to get good results out. If you put garbage in then you're going to get garbage out. The second key ingredient we identified in a project finance model is the construction related assumptions. So usually in a greenfield project finance deal you'd have a construction phase and then an operations phase. So during the construction say for example a toll road would be built during the operations obviously cars would come through that toll road you'd get paid revenue and also you'd incur some expenses. The third key ingredient is obviously the operations which we just briefly talked about. The operations would include things like the revenues you'd be getting. So back to our toll analogy, we would be getting tolls from cars and trucks or heavy vehicles and we'd be incurring operating expenses whether it be toll booth related operating expenses, maintenance expenses for the roads etc etc. And in our operations obviously we may have some working capital. The fourth ingredient is the financing. So obviously with any project finance deal we have a broad range of financing schemes that can be undertaken. Could be a simple debt and equity split or it could be something like debt or bonds, mezzanine debt, um, CPI linked index bonds, shareholder loans. So we obviously need some financing and obviously the financing will in a greenfield project will pay for the construction costs including any interest costs during that construction period and in a brownfield project where you're looking to acquire the project then the financing will relate to the acquisition price. The final ingredient is the cash flow and this is probably one of the most important things in a project finance model. We're not really too bothered about accruals and things like that that would flow through your P&L. We're more looking at the cash flows related to the project. So when we're looking at things like debt service coverage ratio, don't worry if you don't understand that topic right now, but when we're looking at things like debt service coverage ratio, loan life coverage ratio etc etc then we usually look at the cash flows. And we also identified a few other things that could be the cherry on top of the cake such as we could have accounts pages so we could add those accrual systems so we could have the income statement and also the balance sheet. We could have some summary pages, we could include scenario and sensitivity analysis and we could include a checks page which would be a great idea because you want to make sure that your model's functioning correctly. Okay so in the ebook as well we also identified some assumptions that we're going to use in this model and we're going to look at building this model from scratch given those assumptions. Let's take a look. The first thing you've got to note is that obviously this tutorial and spreadsheet is subject to video financial modeling's terms and conditions along with the disclaimer here. So have a quick read through those and then accept the terms and conditions. Obviously only if you agree with those terms and conditions. Okay so like we said before this tutorial looks at developing a basic toll road acquisition this is a brownfield toll road model so we're not going to include any construction costs. We're going to only look at the acquisition of this toll road. So without further ado let's get started. Let's go and tap down here and insert a new sheet. Obviously you can insert a new sheet by also going 
Alt H, I for insert and S for sheet, but you do it whichever way you're comfortable with. We're going to double click in here and we're going to call this the ass sheet. So that's quite a funny name. Um, I like to keep my titles in my tabs quite simple. So the ass sheet is not actually a donkey or anything like that. It's actually the assumptions sheet. So let's go and let's start putting in some assumptions. Now you don't need to format everything the same way as I do, but we have some shortcuts which we teach in the Excel shortcuts tutorial at Video Financial Modeling. So you don't need to format it, but you can if you'd like, or if you've learned these shortcuts, then you can. Now we're going to add in some assumptions like we said. I'm just going to change the column width. So if you go Alt H O for format, and we're going to go width for column width, and we're going to go 2.5. And now we're going to add in, so we're going to call this assumptions. Um, I'm just going to format mine. I'm also going to change the size to custom. Like I said, you don't have to do that, so don't worry about that. Now we're going to put in some general assumptions. We're going to put in a model start date. And we're going to have that equal to the 31st of December, 31st of December, 2012. Well, let's put it 2011. We're going to have an inflation of 2%. Uh, and there are our general assumptions. Now we're going to put in the revenue, or let's call this operating assumptions. So we're going to put in title revenue. I'm going to italics and bold that. And then I'm going to put in a car toll, truck toll, number of cars per day and obviously this will be at a model start date so I'm going to put in a note at model start date uh, we're going to put in the number of trucks we're going to put in the number of cars growth rate And this is a per annum percentage figure. And we're going to put in the number of trucks growth rate. Okay, I'll talk a bit about each of these. So if you're struggling to catch up, take this time to catch up and enter in those labels. So obviously the car toll is just the price per car. So if you're going through a toll booth, it could be $4 that you have to pay to go through that toll booth, et cetera, et cetera. It's just the price per car. Same with the truck toll, the number of cars per day. So we're looking at this on a daily basis at the moment and we're saying that, okay, how many cars are passing through that toll per day? And obviously the revenue that you get from that would be the number of cars per day multiplied by the car toll. Now, obviously over time, the number of cars that are going through that toll is probably or more than likely going to grow. Your economy is growing, the people living in your economy is growing, and more people are going to be using that road. So this is what this assumption is, and the same with the truck growth rate. So let's put in those assumptions now. We've got $3.25, $5.25, $3.25, Eighty one two three thousand nine thousand four percent and two percent. Okay, I'm just going to format these quickly. Like I said, I'm sorry about that. Don't worry if you aren't formatting them, that's an aside that doesn't really matter. Now, what we're going to do as well is we're going to put in some so let's just. Chuck a couple of rows up here so you can select the row, right click, 
and then insert the row if you'd like. And we're going to include, so we're going to include a data type in column D. We're going to include data units and we're going to include a name. Okay, so I'm just going to bold those and let's just change the columns widths, but we'll change that back anyway. So the reason I'm coloring these assumptions in blue is because these are inputs. These are hard-coded numbers and they're inputs. They're not calculations or anything like that. So that's why we're going to put in input here. And I'm just going to copy that down. So control C, control V. Okay, the data type. So this one's a date. This is a percentage. We've got a few more percentages. Like I said, you don't need to put in these data units. I'm just doing this for completeness. If you're struggling for time, don't put in the data units. Focus on putting in the names that we'll come to in a second and naming the cells. So let's go dollar per, per car. And we're going to change this one to dollar per truck. And we're going to put numbers. So let's, these are numbers. And now this one's the important one. So now we're going to put in names. So I'm going to call this start date. Very original. So I'm also going to go Alt H O and also change the column width. So I'm going to auto fit the column width. So I'm going to go I. I'm also going to put in inflation, so inf. I'm going to include a car toll. And what we're doing right now will become apparent shortly. So bear with me and type these out. Car toll, truck toll, number of car per day, cars per day. number of trucks per day, car growth rate, truck growth rate. And I'm going to go Alt H O and then I again, for column widths. Now, there are two ways of naming a cell. The first involves naming an individual cell and the second involves naming a group of cells. Let's name the car toll first. So let's go go to that cell G11 or whatever cell that is on your spreadsheet at the moment, the car toll, go control F3 and then go Alt N or you can simply click the new there. So Alt N, push enter and then push escape. Now what you'll see, if we go back to that cell, in the top left hand corner, you'll see that the cell's now named car toll. Okay, another way to do it is let's go up here. Let's highlight these four cells and let's go Alt and we're gonna go M for formulas and we're gonna go create from selection. So C for create from selection. And we're going to untick this top row and we're going to say in the left column. So now look at this. Okay, so what's happened is we've named both the inf and the start date 